So now we're going to talk about copy and pasting text into WordPress. And it sounds straightforward, it sounds simple, but there are some pitfalls that you have to think about. And we're going to talk about those so that you can avoid them. So we're going to start out by creating a brand new page. And we're going to call it The Beatles. And we're going to go online and find some content that we can copy and paste into there. And then I'm going to talk about what's going on when you're doing that copy and pasting. So I'm going to open up the old Wikipedia article here. And I'm going to select this paragraph. And I have copied it into my clipboard. And now I'm going to paste it into into our WordPress page. So you'll notice a few things here that are interesting. So you'll notice that the formatting has come over from the Wikipedia article. The things that were bold are bolded and the links that are inside of the text are are still in there. So I'm going to highlight one of those just to show you what I mean. And I click on the the link editor, and you can see that this uh, link to Paul McCartney goes to the uh, Wikipedia page um, for Paul McCartney. So if you're copy and pasting content from a supplier's website, be aware that the uh, that there, if there are links inside of the text, those links will still be there. If you want to strip the formatting or the links out in one fell swoop, if you want to strip all the formatting and links out of some text that you're planning to copy and paste into your WordPress blog, then what you can do is open up a text editor. If you're interested in stripping out all the formatting and internal linking from a block of text that you want to paste into your WordPress blog or a blog page, you can open up a text editor and paste that text into the uh, into a fresh text file and then copy it back into uh, WordPress. So let's I'm going to leave this here so you can see the difference. So here you have the stripped version. All the links have been removed and now we can go in and format it and link it any way we want. So that's kind of handy. Obviously you're not going to want to plagiarize content but sometimes you'll want to quote something um, perhaps you'll want to bring over some information from a supplier's website. And uh, that brings us to another type of copy and pasting and some of the perils there. So we have a picture of the Beatles logo here and the caption. So I'm going to copy and paste that in right here. But what am I really looking at? It's uh, worthy of note that the image is really not on your website. What you're doing is you're referring to the image that is hosted on the Wikipedia website. Now, that may be fine in the short term, but if Wikipedia decides to remove that image for some reason or change its name, then you're going to end up with a broken link on your website. The very best way to put an image on your website is not to copy and paste it, but to download it from the original website. So you go and right click and then save image as if possible. And then we're just going to go out of full screen for a moment and then add media and we're going to insert media Upload files, find the file that we downloaded to our computer. It will upload into our library and then we can insert it into our page. Click on insert into page. Oh, I've got it in there twice. So that's the safe way to do it so that if the original image disappears or its name changes, I don't have to worry about the image disappearing from my page and a bunch of 
uh, bad link showing up on my website.